Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast. This week's episode is titled, The Problem with Every Communication or Personality Model. Now, if you've listened to very many episodes of Talk Like a Leader, you know that I teach and advocate and use the DISC model of human behavior in a lot of my work. I use it in teaching communication and leadership and coaching skills, improving emotional intelligence, improving relationship dynamics, resolving conflicts. I use it in lots of different ways because I find it to be a useful tool. And the DISC model, like every communication or personality style model, doesn't matter. Myers, Briggs, social styles, true colors, Big five, all of them share this problem. And I don't say this as a criticism. It's really just an observation or a realization about the limits of how you can apply any of these models to your life, your situation, your career, your relationships. And here's the problem. All of them violate the first rule of statistics. Now, when I go back to when I was in college, I took an experimental statistics class, and I recall the instructor saying, the first thing you never do with statistics is to use a population statistic to describe an individual observation, saying that you can't take the average or the standard deviation or the median or the mode of any population and say that it perfectly represents every single member or element or sample or data point from the population that the statistic was drawn from. And the challenge is that every communication and personality style model uses population statistics to assess or understand an individual person. And before I go too far with this, I want to make sure this is clear. Just because all of the models share this problem does not mean that I think all of the models are useless. And I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But here's the idea of using a population statistic to describe an individual observation. I live near Greenville, South Carolina. It is now the middle of April. So let's say that the average temperature in Greenville, South Carolina on April 19th is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. I think we all understand that I can't say that because the average temperature of all the April 19ths is 74 degrees Fahrenheit, that doesn't mean that this April 19th will be 74 degrees Fahrenheit. It might be, and it might be the most likely temperature, or it might represent the closest estimate of what the temperature is going to be on any given April 19th. It is not precisely the temperature on any given April 19th. For example, in 1983, April 19th, the high temperature of the day was 47 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1917, the high temperature for the day in Greenville, South Carolina, was 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Clearly, there's a range between 47 and 93 that represents all of the April 19th that have been observed, at least recorded history, in Greenville, South Carolina. The average of all of those happens to be 74. Now, does that mean that the average temperature is a useless piece of information because it doesn't perfectly represent April 19th? Well, no. I I think we all understand that The average temperature is a useful piece of information. It's not a perfect piece of information. It's a useful piece of information. It can help us plan or anticipate what to expect on a given day, week, or month. If you're planning to move to an area and you need to know what the climate's like, you can look at average temperature and know what you're likely to expect. And you know it won't be exactly that every single day. You know the statistic is a representation of the days not a perfect predictor of the days. The average temperature for April 19th does not tell you what temperature it's going to be on April 19th. Even the weather forecast doesn't tell you exactly. It's a best guess. Based on averages, based on weather patterns, based on observing the situation and the context, 
We do the best we can to guess whether a forecaster does that, and they tell us it's usually pretty close on most days, and even that's not perfect. Well, see, the idea is that behavior and communication models are much the same. By understanding the average world you're dealing with for a person of a particular style, it probably helps you anticipate or understand or interpret what they say and do more accurately than you could if you didn't have the model. That doesn't mean that it will be perfectly accurate. Now, you see, communication and personality models, they're just tools. And like any tool, they can use well or they can be used badly. I like to point to the idea that I like to do woodworking and construction projects and that kind of thing. And for one example, I have a jigsaw, a table saw, two different miter saws, a circular saw, an oscillating saw, a coping saw, and several different hand saws. The same is true for hammers, wrenches, pliers, knives, screwdrivers, drills, etc. All of the tools are useful. None of them are perfect. And communication and personality models are the same way. They're useful even if they're not perfect. Just because it doesn't perfectly predict how an individual will respond or react or uh, perceive a situation, it does mean it helps me get closer to understanding when I don't know exactly what they're going to do or when they see the world in a different way from me. The individual person is a sample from a population. When we take an assessment, when we make an estimate of their behavior style, we're estimating the population that they happen to come from or what, to which they belong might be a better way to phrase that. Does it mean that their perspective, their outlook, their approach is going to be exactly like every other person who happens to be in that sample of the population? No, because people aren't cookie cutter. People aren't machines. People aren't automatons. People bring their personal experience and history and all kinds of other things, the amount they've learned, how much they've learned about themselves, how much they've learned about others, so many different things. And so like a weather forecaster, we can assess the in full situation. We can use the averages as a way to get closer, to make a better guess. And we want to really resist the temptation to, to drift into using the averages or the typical or the general responses of people who exhibit or rely on a particular style, or as we say in the training I use and, and promote, style blend. So we're trying to take even farther away from a single style to the blend of styles that happen to be present in this person. Even when we get as fine as the blend of styles, we're still talking about populations of people, not individuals. So understanding the model can help you get closer to understanding a person who has a different perspective or outlook from you. It's still not perfect. And let's recognize that. Let's beware of the tendency to drift into judging and stereotyping and, and pre-deciding for people what they can or cannot do or will or will not do based on their style or the style they exhibit, I should say. And recognize that the tools, the models, the averages are just a best guess to help us get closer to understanding another human being, to get closer to adjusting our communication style to be more effective. We're still going to have to adjust for the specific situation and kind of like adjusting to the weather. I'm not going to need a jacket on every April 19th, although on some I might. And I'm not going to wear a short sleeve shirt on every April 19th, although on many I might. See, the averages help me get close. They're not perfect. So even though communication models, all of them, have this problem, are they useful? Absolutely, I think they're useful as long as we hold them loosely rather than tightly in terms of using them to label or judge people, and we remain a bit curious about how other, how other people see and perceive the world, rather than deciding in advance, because I know your primary style, that means I know how you think. Well, no, you don't. You might be able to better understand what they meant by what they said, because you, under, you have a better filter for understanding the lens with which they see the world that doesn't mean you're going to be able to predict exactly how they're going to respond. Hold the models loosely, use them appropriately, try to use them to understand people rather than to label and judge people. I think you'll be able to connect and communicate significantly more effectively than if you didn't use the tools. And if you'll do this, hold the models loosely, use them as tools for understanding rather than labeling and judging, you can talk like a leader.
This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.